All right, we're back at the Focus Podcast, and we got Pete Estmir here. Eastmir. Eastmir. See, it. I always, I'm like the Don Cherry of enunciation sometimes. I'm the same way. Estmir. There we go. What's your Eastmere. name again? Malacarney. Malacarney. Yeah, we're love it. There we bad go. meat. Awesome. I'm yeah. here with bad meat. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. <laughs> Welcome, man. Well, thanks for inviting me over to your yeah. place. Yeah, thanks there. for coming out, man. Yeah, it's nice. It's interesting to chat with people. What's on your shirt there? Is that like a lineup of shows? Yeah, that's a, that's a tour that I did uh, like for three years in a row, the uh, the Western Campfires tour. Yeah. Because I, I I'm like was focused on country music for the last like five years or so, this is just some of the places I played. And uh, yeah, just on the road, the campfire, I was... The, I thought of... Um, I know of a few of those. Yeah, I thought of Joe Strummer when I was uh, creating this tour. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. he, uh, in his later career after The Clash, uh, talked about how important it is to be around the campfire mm. and, uh, and just get people to join together in small, intimate settings and just sing the songs, like solo or whatever. When I was solo yeah. most of the time. And um, people kept inviting me back, and uh, your yeah, I don't really talk too loud. People kept inviting me back, <clears throat> and I uh, enjoyed being out there. I liked being on the road, and so uh, I did three tours out there uh, from 2017, 18, and 19. Okay. And then COVID hit, and yeah. then I uh, had to kind of shut things down, like everybody Slowed did. Slowed us right? all down. Yeah, yeah. So I had to do things indoors. So. I, that's what I did. So, like everybody, you had some good momentum going. I had some good momentum going. I finally got to the States. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then literally... <laughs> That's where I got COVID the, yeah. uh, the first oh. time in February 2020. Okay, so right around the same time I was in Seattle. I was in uh, New Orleans. Okay, so the, the last... Uh, we had the last day we were there was the first recorded case. Uh, in right the states or public right public public one. one yeah yeah I was at the uh, what was it called the uh, uh, Folk Alliance International Conference I was actually playing down there at, okay uh, a mm-hmm. showcase I got deathly ill like on uh, t- as sick as I've ever been and, wow. uh, like high fever sweating cough and I made it to the showcase I just barely got it through I I didn't know what it was I was taking. Yeah, I was just going to say, how the fuck would you know any... No, I didn't know anything. And uh-huh. I was so, like, almost embarrassed on the plane getting back because I was coughing so bad. And yeah. people knew something was up, like, do this guy have pneumonia or yeah. what? And I just needed to get home, so made it somehow. Holy shit. And it took about two months to recover. So. That must have been the worst on the plane because you can't really do I, much yeah, on the yeah. plane. Yeah, and I have, like, respiratory issues as well, so I was like... Uh, Trying not to die on the plane. Fuck. So it just like inflated <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you move in just a little. I just want to yeah. get you closer to the mic there. Yeah. Um, no, that's crazy. So right off the bat, you had it, but I you, got didn't, it. you didn't know what it was. No, nobody knew what so it was. So that's more freaky than anything, like not even knowing yeah. how to combat it. Yeah. Or like, so I but guess your body th- must have just told you just to go fucking sleep when you get home. Well, was, I, I literally. Uh, we had a we rented a little B and B or something, or yeah, I guess that's what it was. And I I went out and did a few things, and then I was crashed, and I literally couldn't go out. And uh, made it to the Thursday showcase or Friday, whatever that was. Got through it. They loved it. Me and my partner Eva Marie were down there, and. Uh, it was important to do and uh, went back and crashed again but the good thing is I wrote a couple of songs during the delirium and uh, I still have them they're on a like a short list to uh, uh, be recorded at some point you know so uh, I was so you happy at least about captured that, that yeah that that's idea. true no yeah. definitely definitely it was uh, it was uh, it was it was strong. I used to sing the song a bit. So I've sang it a lot when I first wrote it. So gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah I um, I had just like a new a new song for the new album, 
papers I had done. <clears throat> so I tried it out on the road and it was feeling good. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, once I, once I got back from, and then I realized what was happening. I had a whole bunch of shit lined up too. I was working with these, uh, this duel from the States and we had all these plans of into the neat, into the year doing shows in the States. And then we were going to hook up and go to like France and a whole bunch of shit. So yeah, whatever. Good, good. it's all over. We're here where we are. We're here now. We're, we're, you know, stronger than ever. And we're uh, still uh, grinding on. We're yeah. Still, still, <clears throat> still doing it. Yeah. So what did you, did you, you, cause it's, you know, you've done this for a long time. Did you take a break at that time? Cause me, I came, it, it was almost like I worked really hard right at the break when it happened. And I just went and went and went until I ran out of steam. And then once I ran out of steam, it was just like, okay, there's nothing going on. So I'm just going <clears> to <throat> reset and kind of. Well, all the all the the live gigs like dried up completely, obviously, because yeah. couldn't you couldn't do that. So, uh, you know, I I I cocooned. You know, I, I I stayed in my house with my kids and uh, isolated family because you're only allowed your isolated family. Uh, when holidays came around, well, we would I would meet my grown up kids. Uh, on the porch, so weird. And we'd right? have Thanksgiving, and we'd place the chairs, the kitchen chairs, under the tree on the on the porch. Such a weird time. And I would serve them uh, turkey and stuffing and gravy and potatoes, and we'd do toasts over the over the over the, the open railing there. Yeah, so I did that, um, and you know I still was writing, but um, I was just getting used to things. Uh, but I decided I wasn't going to stop. I, I had uh, I had a whole bunch of songs that I had was actually on the last 2019 tour, uh, Western Campfires. I was like uh, road testing for the for the the record before last, not uh, Devil's Taxi, uh, Keep Your Love Steady. So I didn't want to lose the momentum. Mm-hmm. So I decided to do uh, a record called Keep Your Love Steady in Nashville, uh, remotely with uh, a guy, a Canadian guy down there called. Uh, um, Steve Dawson. Okay, nice. And uh, so we did that, and we had a bunch of Canadian like s- country superstars on the record. You know, just great player Gary Craig plays with uh, Bruce Coburn and and John Arden and Blackie and the Rodeo Kings, and uh, and Steve's like a eight time Juno Award winner. He's a fantastic pedal steel guitar player, which is a big part of my sound. Mm-hmm. Oh, am I getting this right? Oh, I'm talking about the Devil's Taxi record. Oh, Sorry. It's all good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, going back, a little uh, brain fog there. Uh, yeah, no, I did uh, the Keep Your Love Steady record in 2019. So yeah. I was on the road with that. And that was with uh, Burt Carroll, uh, a pedal steel virtuoso, and uh, Adam Warner on drums, and uh, Dennis Keldy on accordion, and, uh, and James Paul on bass. And I played all the guitar parts. I worked out all the guitar parts, which was nice. I played like four or five different guitars. Oh, wow. And uh, my partner, Eva Marie, she uh, sang backup harmonies. And it was a very stripped down version. And uh, so that's what I was doing. And then COVID, getting back to that, we did the Devil's Taxi record remotely. Nice. Yeah. So was that like, because obviously a lot of people had to be forced to do remote stuff. Is that new for you? Absolutely. That type of stuff? So, oh, yeah, absolutely. So I had to set up my own studio in the yeah. house. I have a room like this. Well, except it's <clears> open. <throat> um, and I had my uh, trusty old uh, Guild F40 uh, uh, guitar, acoustic guitar. And uh, I laid down the, uh, the bed track. I learned how to use the technology, the uh, Interact, the, the Facebook. I did I, I did my uh, my guide tracks on GarageBand. Oh yeah, I, I learned on GarageBand. Yeah, and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. No, I got and I bought a nice microphone, good yeah. microphone, uh, a Rode, I believe it is, yeah. and it got a nice sound. I placed it, put a blankets around, and uh, buffers, and got guitar parts down. Played with the timing until I got it right, and uh, and then then did a ghost vocal. 
so that the band could uh, play around. Then we'd have a meeting uh, online, a Zoom meeting on a Sunday night with everybody present. Talk it out. And we'd talk about it. I would tell them about what the inspiration, what the song was about and uh, what I was going for. And uh, they're very bright people. And uh, they came up with some cool stuff. Cool. Yeah, and it you know it got uh, some pretty good critical reviews uh, internationally. Got featured in Maverick Magazine UK. Oh, amazing! And uh, and on their Spotify pet playlist, so the money's just rolling in from mm-hmm. Spotify. Yeah, I probably got about the tens ten, of tens, tens of dollars, tens of cents, I tens think. of dollars, yeah, tens, tens of, of cents. cents. Yeah, they, I got tens of yeah, cents from that. Yeah, two I still views. haven't seen the check yet because I think it's a dollar before they actually send a transfer yeah, to you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but that was fun anyway. I got some nice promo and, uh, and I had a little momentum because I got a, uh, in the Keep Your Love Steady, I got an honorable mention in uh, American Songwriter magazine oh, sick. for uh, my song, uh, Shirley Temple, mm-hmm. and uh, off Keep Your Love Steady. And so things were rolling along. And, uh, and so the record was fine. It was fun. I played uh, uh, a few different guitars on the... Uh, Devil's Taxi they were all from a, the, the latest song cycle except for the song Qu- coincidentally enough Devil's Taxi which was a song about eight years old that I had written uh, in another house yeah, and it was on the back burner kind of. it was on, yeah it, it was such a great song but it was it didn't fit mm-hmm. on what I had in my in this yeah, yeah. in the in the the record that I was going for this time was a little bit more <laughs> rocky uh, country rock yeah. And there's kind of folk too. So a mixture of acoustic and electric and mandolins and uh, nice. accordion. So it was, it was, a, it was, it had a niche, I guess. And so yeah. people relate to it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I think when I met you was like just proud because I remember seeing you at Grossman's a lot. Yeah. And it was just probably prior to all that 2019. Yeah. You had a re- I remember you had a new record. Okay, I was yeah. probably the keep your love, yeah, yeah, keep that your love one, steady. Yeah, that one sounds familiar. I yeah. remember you advertising that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And uh, it was funny because I saw you, maybe it was August. No, maybe before that. Maybe it was like June or July I saw you at uh, Grossman's. And we were talking, you were saying about where you were going. That's the year you're talking about. Yeah. Right? I remember that conversation. I almost yeah. think I was like... Either I was, I was doing the shows and then you were doing the same spots or like... We were both going out we were, east, I think. We were kind of doing the same pattern. Like, yeah, I, yeah. Went, I think you went before me. That's, I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I went all of July. Or actually, I left on the... Uh, so you did the beginning of July. I was like the second half of yeah, July. Yeah, actually, I started on the like the 28th of June. Yeah. Uh, coincidentally enough, uh, at in Ontario, in Collingwood, at the uh, Collingwood Yacht Club. Yeah. So I was on this whole nautical kind of thing, Ooh, going nice. out east thing. And we got booked there. A uh, really cool gig. Uh, Collingwood's I, nice. I grew up in Collingwood. Oh, uh, okay. It was part of my time. So yeah. uh, I got contacted by uh, the, uh, the troubadour, not the troubadour, the uh, whatever they call the... Uh, the head of the yacht club. I mean, yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know the Commodore, time. maybe the Commodore, maybe. Commodore. Uh, I think he's called the Commodore. And he said, uh, "What are you doing on the 28th? Can you uh, can you come up and do a gig for us uh, as part of our major regatta?" And and I said, "Sure." It turns out he knew uh, he'd been a teacher and he uh, knew my cousins in Barry who are uh, fine. Uh, oh, really? Fiddle players. He he actually taught them. He was a teacher. No way. So he taught Kyle Sharon with. Which he recognized from my band because they Kyle plays in my band. He eventually moved out east, and he was out there when I was touring this year. And um, yeah, shout out to Kyle here. Uh, I don't know what the the re, what the, the latest news is, but last year he won the uh, he, he he was kind of a child prodigy. He, mm. he won a bunch of uh, fiddle contests from okay. six years old onward. Wow. And like he finally won the Shelburne fiddle contest and all the other, but uh, not this year. But last year, yeah. last year he uh, he won the Canadian Nationals. Oh for, shit! And he and he had uh, he he took two or three years off from playing. He just like took time off. He just needed to get away from it and and start. And then the people around him, some of the people, once he moved out there, said, "Will you represent uh, Nova Scotia and the Nationals?" 
And he said, sure, you can do it. So he went to New Brunswick and he won the dang thing. <laughs> and uh, his brother, I got a shout out to is Jake Sharon. And uh, he's also, uh, I'm shouting out to the family here. Uh, Hi, Jake. Uh, yeah. He lives in PEI and he's part of a band called the East Pointers. Okay. And they've won a, a Juno uh, as, as a Celtic Celtic rock band. Yeah. I actually just saw them at the Budweiser stage. Oh, sick. Uh, uh, about a, less than a month ago, uh, opening for Alan Doyle. Holy shit. Yeah, and that was fun. And a whole bunch of my uh, cousins were there. And, nice. And so, so they're, they're, they're a great musical family. I guess we're a musical family, and I have a small part in like inspiring them because I used to back up Kyle when he was six years old yeah. on guitar while he played uh, uh, fiddle. But Jake was a, it was a great accompanist. He plays piano and backed up Kyle yeah. and uh, classically trained. And then he just picked up guitar and just like blew me out of the water within six months. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm a little proud of those guys. You know? Nice. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah exactly. You see the full circle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're doing well. No, that's great. So where'd you go in, in, Nova, uh, in the East Coast? Um, I was, uh, our first gig was, we drove out there, um, Marie and I. And we played at uh, Bubba's Lounge. Oh, know, I played there. In Charlottetown. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And some friends Good came. Lebanese food. Very nice food. Very yeah. nice people. Very nice They're people. They're awesome there. Yeah. And uh, sound system was great. Sound yeah. guy was great. Great. And uh, upstairs, right? Like yeah, the on the second like floor. Attic almost. Yeah, yeah. It's very nice. Well, the peak roof, I yeah. think, on the, uh, on the top. Yeah. So that was really cool. Nice introduction. Um, I guess I'd been there. The, uh, the night before, we got there one day early, so I didn't want to like completely rush things and be exhausted. Uh, we drove out there in like two days, and uh, which is doable. And, uh, you know, had a great dinner and, and a, 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 a nice little restaurant, had oysters. and They were like the best I've ever tasted. You gotta yeah. have them while you're out there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It was the best I've ever tasted. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and a nice glass of wine. And then... Uh, Part of the plan is we we decided to uh, part of the trip we were going to go to Ile de Magdalene, the islands, which is a Quebec island off of uh, PEI. It's a five oh. hour ferry ride. Shit! So you go north of PEI. You go north of PEI from uh, Suras, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we decided to fly in my mother in law and one of my kids, River. Oh wow! To join us because Andre, my mother in law. Is from the island of Ile de Mandelin. No way. The original, all her ancestors are there. And there's actually an island called uh, Paquette Island. Yeah. Ile de, Ile de Paquette. So that's like off of Labrador? Kind yeah, of? exactly. You can get it there. Well, off of Newfoundland and off of uh, PEI, off yeah. of Labrador too. You, there's a ferry from uh, uh, Newfoundland and there's a ferry from PEI. And it was just a very cool ferry ride, a five-hour ride. Yeah, man. It was just beautiful weather. The, the sea was calm. I, I've never been out that far on the ocean. It's like, it's the Gulf of St. Lawrence, I guess, but it's the Atlantic it's Ocean, right? It's the Atlantic Ocean. It's the yeah. Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, it's so no joke. Yeah. It was really cool. And yeah. It was really nice. So, uh, so we spent five nights there so that Andre, who's 83 years old, could look around. She's a painter. Oh, man. An amazing painter. And she got back and we drove all this. There's only one road that runs from north to south. And we and we just toured around. We saw her island that her family actually bought and owned at one point back wow. in the 30s or 40s. And then uh, Scarlet Fever uh, claimed uh, her grandfather and, oh, and grandmother. Shit. And her father had to emigrate to, there were some people came around from Quebec and said, why don't you come and work in the mills uh, in, uh, in Chicoutimi? Yeah. So uh, with nothing else to do as a 16 year old or 17 year old, he moved out there and, uh, sorry, Not so and uh, <clears throat> started a life there. Yeah. And was a company man at the Chicoutimi mill for 50 years or 40 years. Raised a family, like five kids very smart people some of them became phds at uh, mcgill university andre became a uh, uh, very ma great painter master painter in fact the cover of my record uh, you can find it is, oh, is, is her is painting his, is her painting uh, of uh, the cameron house oh wow because i used to do uh, residencies there yeah it's an amazing painting everybody just like stops in their track they're just jaw drops yeah it's, she's uh, 
she's an incredible person, high energy. She spends uh, a couple of days a week with us, uh, you know, staying overnight and mm-hmm. visiting the grandkids and all that stuff. So anyway, so there, that's it. So, uh, yeah, so we spent five nights there. We played one little gig at the, uh, just an informal little gig at the uh, uh, Paradise Blue. The, Do they have uh, play- a little tiny place to play there? Or? Oh, yeah, it's in, it's actually not tiny. It's a, it's a, it's like, a, it's actually a youth hostel. Oh, wow. So right. uh, with a big deck <coughs> and, uh, you know, a big deck and a fire pit. And, uh, and then, but because we were four, Four of us, we rented a little cabin. Mm. We were just there, and we had our own little cabin. Oh, sweet! And we could cook, and we could do everything. In the and the ocean was right there, and, and each different day, I found a different beach to swim in because I love swimming. It nice. Keeps me healthy. Me too. It's freezing cold. I didn't mind it. That you jumps, know, it gets the blood yeah. Going. It was hot. Gets the blood going, and uh, like it was really cold in uh, uh, the very tip north, which is called. Uh, uh, entree, what's it called? Entree New, something like that. It's, it's the lobster capital of Quebec. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I swam there in the mist. It was really cool. And uh, yeah, and other places, if you went down the coast where there was sand beaches, uh, because it was shallow, it was uh, quite a bit warmer. Yeah. So uh, I'd stay in a different place. I'd swim every day and we'd travel around. Yeah, see the locals. And so you went uh, PEI? Uh, Ile de Magdalene. So and then we were playing in uh, New Glasgow at the uh, Shoebox Cantina. So I played in New Glasgow. Uh, yeah. But And I was booked there. Yeah. And this was like two, three years ago I was going to go. Okay. And the guy was like, oh, let me get another rapper artist for you. Okay, right. So I was like, all right, okay. So I... I Message the guy and then he did one of these showcases where it's like 15 people playing and then so he sends me the oh. list and he's like uh, I got you a 10 minute slot at like the bottom. Oh, yeah, Last and I was like time. You know what? I was like, I didn't want to be rude, but I was like listen. I've done this for a long time I already had my own night Mm-hmm. Like I can handle a headlining spot. I wasn't asking for a headlining spot, right, but I was right. like, I'm not gonna go out and do <clears throat> all the way from Toronto to do a 10 minute. Yeah. So I kind of yeah. I backed out of that one. Yeah. But I uh, I've been in touch with that guy a few times. And yeah. He's cool. His name is uh, the sound man. His name was Ian, I believe. Yeah. I don't know what it is. There's somebody else that does the booking possibly. Yeah. Like, yeah. But Ian was fantastic, uh, sound guy. And uh, we had another local opening act for us, or we went on first act and they came on later. Uh, but it was really cool, a single guy, young songwriter, like about 18, full of energy, played electric guitar, and had a great vibe about him. And he, he brought a whole bunch of people with him as well. Okay. And so it was a, a dual night. And I think that worked out really well because more people got to see us. They loved our set. Uh, people were actually dancing, uh, sold CDs. People yeah, were asking sick. for CDs. Nice. So we really connected, right? So it's the best province. It's like, it's really nice. Yeah. And I had lived out there. I had a band uh, out in Nova Scotia. And uh, people always said my earlier stuff reminded them of the East Coast. I lived on the East Coast. I lived in uh, the South Shore of Nova Scotia and had a band, country rock band in the 70s. Oh, so you live near Halifax there? Uh, in the uh, South Shore, Chester, Nova Scotia. Okay, yeah. Near Mahone Bay. And yeah. Uh, just, uh, it's just north of Lunenburg. Lun- I was just going to say Lunenburg. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was a, that's another old story. Uh, and so uh, we were really well received. I, I guess I'm, I'm pretty, like what you see is what you get with me. Yeah. I don't really, uh, I don't try to jazz my talk up or anything yeah. like that. And people... People kind of relate to me, and I tell stories. People keep, which is I've always done, but my my songs are storytelling, and I give the background of songs. And I remember, maybe when I was less, when I was more shy, uh, as a younger guy, uh, I, I would just play the songs, my earnest songs, or I mm-hmm. play them as well as I could, and, and I, I wouldn't really tell the background of the song so but because I'm more comfortable with myself I'm, I guess my own skin I'm a little more comfortable mm-hmm. I tell the story where these songs are, originate from 
especially on the last record. Uh, well, I have been doing it for, and there's storytelling, and people are interested in the backstory of uh, of Tom Mix, the uh, song off of uh, the Devil's Taxi. Is a guy who used to work with my dad. He was like a lumberjack, and uh, he to me he was like the strongest man in the world, like mm-hmm. a, like a Paul Bunyan. I think Paul's the first name, Paul Bunyan. Yeah. Yeah. The big, and uh, I used to yeah the giant guy, and uh, he taught me how to uh, chew tobacco at eight years old, when I. Uh, when I used to go in the woods with him, uh, cutting cutting uh, timber with my dog Lady, and uh, and so the the name of Tom came to me one day. I hadn't thought of him in forty years, and I was walking through the park with my dog, and uh, and I the name just came, uh, uh, Tom Mix, and I just thought of Tom Mix. I had this really strong image of him and a very strong impression. I went home and wrote the song, mm. and uh, it's it's. It's it's a really good kind of folk folk song, all acoustic, mm-hmm. and it turned out really well on the record. And it's a kind of a crowd pleaser too, because there's a, a lot of flat picking in it. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of a, a nice vibey song. And when I tell the story of who Tom Mix is, and uh, and I play it up in Collingwood, people know the the Mix family from Glen Huron. Oh wow. It gets around. And, yeah. and it gets around. And they say, oh, I'm going to talk to, uh, you know, Josephine Mix. I'm going to tell her that P.D. Smear wrote a song for Tom. And I say, yeah, sure, tell him. When I was up in Collingwood uh, last weekend at the Collingwood Art Crawl, people came from uh, uh, around from my high school and very singular there. And there was one guy actually worked in the shipyard with my dad. Wow. And, uh, and I say, how, how could this guy look? My dad has passed a few, quite a few years ago, 10 years ago. And uh, but this guy must have been one of the young kids working in the yard no when he was eighteen or twenty. My dad was like fifty or something like that, or four months. And he said, "You look like just like your dad." So well, that's fine, you know. Yeah. My dad was a crane operator in the shipyard too. That's one of the things he did. So he heard your music, and, you and he heard my music. Yeah, and oh, they really cool. liked it. And it was, it was just so fun being up there. Yeah, and you know, we just put on a high energy show, right? Because I wish I always feel like. Uh, we got the kitchen style show, kind of like you can put it in the East Coast kitchen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter how yeah. big the, the room is or how small. Yeah. I, I play it like it's my last show. Yeah. You yeah. know, just give everything to it. Yeah. And it was great. Uh, we sang in a one microphone because my SM58, 57, for some reason died. They're, they're indestructible. And uh, it worked the last time I played. <laughs> And all of a sudden, so we sang into the the fifty eight, the two. It's always the first for something. Yeah, <laughs> usually it's cable. Wasn't the cable because I changed cables. Yeah, I don't know. If I have to go back and check it, but I got another fancy mic. I'll That's why you bring it back up, right? I'll, I'll bring it back up next time. <laughs> Those things are indestructible, well, and it wasn't dropped or anything. I yeah. don't understand it. Just didn't. Wasn't its night. It wasn't its night. Yeah, so I have to figure out. I have to actually contact somebody to say, let's just fix this. Yeah, because yeah. I don't. It's such a great microphone. Yeah, you don't want to run into that problem again. No, absolutely. So, I can... Yeah, I love the East Coast. It's great. I, I was in New Glasgow, and my stepmom's from there. So she oh, yeah. She was out there already planning a party for her friend. So I uh, flew out with my sister, because I was in Montreal for a week already. So I just flew from Montreal, and I booked a, a show at the Thistle in okay. New Glasgow it's like a kind of older bar oh that's nice so they got like a new patio and I hooked up with a younger guy there uh, who runs it so I have a good connection there now and uh, I had a local opener as well nice. and so I had uh, my stepmom's family out there so I had okay. my own little cheering section that's nice yeah. yeah it was fun that's good and then uh, have you been to uh where else did you go? Because I played in uh, Sydney. <clears throat> I've played in uh, only Halifax a couple times. Well, back in the day, I used to play all over the place. So down there, so we we stopped in at Chester. Okay. And uh, one of the reasons for going out there was uh, Chester on the way to is that like it's on the way on this highway, the main highway, Highway Two or something. Yeah. That goes right along the shoreline. Uh, on the bottom yeah past the, the first place is the well known place um, what's it Peggy's Cove oh yeah yeah Peggy's yeah, Cove yeah. then Chester then Mahone Bay yeah and then Lunenburg yeah. and then it goes further south from there 
Um, so, uh, so because I lived in Chester, uh, I wanted to take uh, Marie to Chester this evening because uh, I rode, uh, I used to hitchhike around a lot. That's how I ended up there in the 70s. And uh, I got, uh, we used the word kidnapped from the Atlantic Folk Festival. I was actually asked to play at the Atlantic Folk Festival in 1978. Uh, I was playing on the street and somebody said, go see uh, Brooks Diamond, who's running the festival. He's looking for people to play around campfires and stuff. And so I, I walked into his office and introduced myself. He says, you're hired. He says, the, the station wagon leaves on uh, like Thursday morning, be here at 10 o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock and uh, you get a ride up there. So long story short, I met, uh, I met uh, Brad Armstrong and Bob McIsaac there also doing the same thing. They were from Chester. We had such a great time playing all the songs we knew. Uh, the Eagles, uh, you know, Hank Williams, uh, uh, traditional, uh, traditional East Coast songs, um, Van Morrison. And they said, well, well you got to come back to Chester with us. It's race week. It's the most exciting week in the whole life. Mm. So I piled into another station wagon and they literally, they said, you're kidnapped. And they, they gave me, a, one of the other guys who was with us, gave me a place to stay and I crashed on their couch. And we played music for about how many hours were there in a week? Uh, I don't know. It was 24 in a day. Anyway, we played like 100 hours straight. So Make you're fun. literally thrown right into it. Oh, right. Like, and, and we just connected like in such a big way. Yeah. And then uh, after a week and race week, and there was like these sailing boats and, and Brad Armstrong uh, was uh, a crew member on the Eclipse, which is a, a wooden boat, uh, 36 foot, built by Ben Heisler from uh, a famous boat builder from Chester. And the place was just a happening place. People from Boston came out with lots of rich yeah, people yeah. from Boston. And it was cool. I just had such a great time. And I went back and then I hitchhiked out the door again, you know. Uh, and then they sent me a letter and said, uh, come back uh, in the spring. They sent me in like in February. We're starting a band. We want you to be uh, in the band. I had a whole bunch of songs. They had a whole bunch of songs. Brad and Bob had been in uh, in the same high school rock band together. Oh, sick. Yeah, and another guy, uh, um, Brad as well, was a drummer. And uh, so they were still a trio. And I came along and uh, played uh, the same guitar I have now, the, uh, the Guild F40 1963. Oh, wow. And I had a, a Sunrise pickup in it, sounded really good. And uh, Brad played acoustic guitar, and we harmonized beautifully. Brad is an amazing voice. That's what attracted me to that mm -hmm. that outfit. And I used to, we used to do uh, Grateful Dead songs nice. like "Friend of the Devil" yeah. and all the harmonies. And Brad had some really cool original songs. Back to present day, the summer, I reconnected with him after forty six years. I you know um, I was there for about a year or so. And I, I couldn't face spending a, a dismal, cold winter in, in Chester yeah. after things <laughs> shut down. And uh, so uh, I hitchhiked back out of there. But before that, um, so they said, you'll be back. And I said, sure, of course I'll be back. You know, but it took 40 years, 46 years to, <laughs> to get back there. He did say And he's there. still in the same log cabin that wow. I bunked in, in the middle of Chester. Yeah. And uh, two of my other bandmates, Bob and, and Brad, both passed on from alcohol and drugs. There's a lot of drinking yeah, and imagine. a lot of, lot of rock and roll drugs and stuff, yeah. which uh, I participated in fully. Uh, and then I stopped cold turkey when I was 21. This is all happening when I was uh, 19, 20. It's not like my dad. My dad did like every <laughs> drug under the sun and quit when he was like 22. Yeah, 21 yeah. I went cold turkey. Yeah. I wasn't big big on drinking, but there was all the other stuff that yeah. I was experimenting with. And I needed to. It was a, it was a, an escape, right, yeah. for me. I needed to escape. So. Yeah. And explore imagination. Yeah, that's what it's for. Yeah. And, um, yeah. It's, it's a good thing I, I stopped because I was like... Having flashbacks and hallucinations because oh. I did massive for about eight years after that. Okay. So uh, there was all that stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar with uh, Rochdale? 
Oh, yeah, sort of. Yeah, my dad lived in Rochdale. Oh, okay, so he was part of that scene. Well, uh, yeah. That was before me. He was, that was I think he was a seven. bystander. He wasn't really into yeah. He mm-hmm. did, he did, he did whatever, you know. He, right. He was into bikes a lot too. And he kind of, he, he grew out of it. After oh, yeah. Living there. Uh, yeah. And seeing a lot of shit. Yeah. No, and, it's, uh, uh, yeah, there was a scene. I mean, it was, it was part of the lifestyle that yeah, I, I was exactly. living. And, uh, but it was like seven days a week, right? It was yeah, like, exactly. Uh, and, and we were the, uh, Whenever you go to a party, a kitchen party out east, it's like Oops. you you're asked to play a song. I was just known as the as the singer, the yeah. songwriter in the band. I wasn't the lead guy, but I was. You know, my hair was down to here. I had a beard. I looked much older than I am now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> twenty years old, <laughs> and uh, I wanted to be old back yeah. then. Now I, I'm I'm quite happy to be sixteen again. But yeah, I'm not, exactly. Not this kind of thing. Me. I've turned it on the on the end. Yeah. So uh, ID me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but that was what it was, and and so we would never stop playing. Yeah. And uh, it was great. Um, but I was worried that people were going to get killed at, uh, on the way home from gigs because people did driving yeah, home oh, pissed I, drunk. Oh right? yeah, yeah. I I came. Up people like, did. Yeah. Yeah, I went to school in North Bay. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, there was right. a fucking like I every understand. weekend there was somebody that was probably killed. Yeah. Yeah. And I've played in North Bay in the last. Our uh, school tours. had a. We were way up in a hill. Yeah, and we used to walk down all the time at the end of the bar at night, and then you know people you'd hear people getting killed on the road because it's a big bend down there and there's ice and there's no there's a lot of good people driving ninety miles an hour. Yeah, and you want like you're drunk and you wander out on the road a bit and there was yeah yeah Yeah, no and uh, you know North Bay is to be to be clear it's got uh, uh, still got. Tons of problems with the uh, oh, opioids and the stuff oh, in the uh, Aboriginal I population. It, I imagine it's even worse than it, it was probably is now. When and, I was uh, twenty years ago, I went to school there. Yeah, it's a crisis of uh, all over huge the, proportion. All over Canada. I was I was just in Edmonton. Uh, yeah, for ten days and hope that's fuck holy shit. I, I've seen tough areas in the country, but Edmonton it was like. Mm. Uh, you know, there's people panhandle downtown here, and they're almost like conditioned to people ignoring them. Mm-hmm. So in Toronto, like somebody will come ask for change, and you're like, "Sorry, I don't have anything." They'll just kind of move on. Yeah. So there, the thing was, with credit cards it was and debit, you don't carry the cash there. Yeah. Like there was, I've there I've had some aggressive people ask for money, but they were like. They would not take no for an answer. They're like, mm-hmm. come with a different story. Yeah. yeah. Come back at you. But mm-hmm. we were at one of the hotels downtown and I've never like, I've seen some bad situations in front of hotels, but it was like almost every day there was somebody like passed out in the lobby. Like that was their last salvation. Yeah. And, or somebody went just flipped their shit and there's like a paddy wagon there and it's bad all over the country. It's like, mm-hmm. you don't, know, it, it, it is pretty prevalent here in Toronto but it's like it almost seems like there's money to sweep that under the carpet here in mm-hmm. Toronto but in the smaller cities like especially in Ontario you go all around it's it's fucking brutal well, it's, it's, uh, it's very brutal and it's extremely brutal let's talk about uh, the aboriginal popula- population they're just they're being really screwed over like the oh yeah the whitefish uh, reserve near south of of uh Kenora has had has had a bold water ev- uh, advisory for about fifty years, forty years at least. Yeah, and they can't have clean water. They don't, if you have, don't clean have clean water. Clean water, you can't start with anything. Yeah, no. I mean it's just ridiculous, um, and it just shows how much we don't care about the 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 local the original inhabitants of uh, Turtle Island, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and and. Uh, there's so much judgment that goes on to, p- to people because maybe they t- turn to, uh, you know, substances. But I mean, when you have nothing to live for, uh, and you have don't have, you don't see any other way out. There's, it's it's extremely tough. So uh, we we need to keep talking about it, and we need to uh, find solutions. We need to elect 
politicians who take that seriously, you know? Well, the truth needs to start. That's the first thing is like, is admitting things. And then and I'm a white, sorry to interrupt, but I'm a white yeah. person who shouldn't be talking. I don't take any credit for knowing anything about this. I'm yeah. a white person, uh, part of the colonizing English, Scottish, Irish descendants of mine uh, who came over here. Uh, but, you know, there was a lot of things that weren't talked about. We, we never saw any orange t-shirts in the school year like I saw oh, yesterday. Oh, yeah, it's just been like... It's some, unbelievable how to last... see, some, see some hope and some people talking about it. They're not going to go uh, uneducated that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of unmarked graves in residential schools. Yeah. I mean, I'm just repeating what facts are, are I know. You know, yeah. and I'm I'm not a spokesperson or anything like that. I'm just a concerned uh, community member. Well, if right? you don't understand the 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 past, you don't you don't understand what's yeah. happening in the present. Yeah. So it's yeah. I I remember um, Gord Downey talking about stuff. Yeah. And he was the first to really like. It wasn't like he was the first. To mention these schools or these, mm -hmm. you know, this conditions of living. Yeah, he did. He but did. he was the first to really use what he had as a platform to really gun ho and get some attention. And he did something that I never ever seen before. He actually brought it to like an audience that you would not think True. would be aware of any yeah of there's stuff. a lot of there are quite a few uh and kind of redneck components to the uh, to the tragically hip uh, fan yeah. base right yeah exactly and yeah. he turned a coin on it and i was that to me him that solidified him as a, a person and, and as an artist at the end for me but he was always like that and i didn't really understand a lot what he was saying up until a few years until he passed and then I yeah, was he had really the, understanding he had the, the poetry book the Wenjack uh, yeah, series I that believe. one and I had uh, friends who worked on that actually oh good and but then um, yeah it was he was the first to really bring that to the forefront you know which was pretty commendable because he stood on his own pretty much for that and uh, yeah I think there's just it needs there needs to be more education of understanding what happened uh, I, I do a lot of uh, AV tech stuff, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, corporate stuff. So I've done, yeah. I did a, a whole, uh, it was like three days of um, people telling their stories one after another. Oh, right. It was heavy. It yeah. was some heavy stuff. And they for had the actually, Truth and Reconciliation uh, yeah, work. Yeah. It was that, and it was more for like uh, what they were bringing to. Um, what, before they met the Pope, they were bringing things to the Catholic Church. Right. And it, it was going to go to, like, um, United Nations. Right. So this is, last year I was doing this event, this was maybe a couple of years ago. Yeah, and it was it was pretty heavy because it was, it was like, story after story. And they really had no time. They had to, like, cut people off. It was just, right. the amounts of stories were, like, unbelievable yeah and that's just like scratching the surface um but you know uh you probably know this 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 gentleman a friend of mine he's uh ace and abby he's really crushing it he's a indigenous artist and oh yeah evan yeah yeah uh, you've probably known him for i know of him scene. i haven't yeah. i haven't met him yeah so he i used to do a lot of showcases with a buddy of mine and uh <clears throat> we we were sitting around We'd spend the whole lockdown together. We'd go down to Woodbine Beach and get coffee and just. Oh coffee. yeah. Uh huh. So he was in a he was in a band. Yeah, it was in like three piece band. He had his own solo stuff, and then he had his band, and then he was like, "Oh, I want to go off and be solo." And I was like, "Yeah, this it's your story. Mm -hmm. You know, do what you want. You should yeah. do what you want. If there's somebody." He's the guy who may also uh, focus on his grandfather. One of yes, his songs. so that's that right? what I was getting to. So okay. he started. He said, I, I, I talked to my grandfather and mm -hmm. he's like, I started, I found out he was from one of these schools and he started having long conversations with him. Oh, that's good. And then he found out, you know, all this history. So it kind of, 
he found himself <clears throat> as an artist and then he changed his name mm-hmm. and then he went in this direction and it was just like uh, perfect timing wow. for him too so and he, I think he got to know him really, I'm not sure if his grandfather passed but he got r- to know him really really well and then that like helped him well that's very fortunate because <clears throat> not all grandparents uh, are able to open up about yeah. their experiences so yeah. I mean uh, what can I say? What what a gift to be able to share the uh, you know uh, very painful memories. Yeah. And uh, I remember listening to that track, and, and I believe <laughs> he it's played his, me that original his, phone message that's on the album. That's right. He played it on the phone. Yeah, for exactly. Me. And I was like, that's oh, sick. Okay. That I can hear that on your album. You know? Yeah. Like, well, there you go. So you're part yeah. of that in a very small way. <gasps> I, mean, I won't. But it's cool because he, he, he got his voice of his grandfather on the record, right? Yeah. So, uh, which makes it more authentic. And uh, I don't know the guy. I'd like to meet him somehow. He, uh, he's, uh, I know other people who've uh, he was, seen him. He was that talented before he got big. He was like, he put, and uh, he, I remember he, he's like, I met these two, these two women and they started their very first like indigenous uh, label. I know who you mean. That's and, uh I know Shani- the women. Sh- Shanika. Shaniqua. Yes. From, uh, yeah. She's from uh, Digging Roots. Yeah. Yeah. I exactly. met them there. Yeah. They're friend. She's a friend of mine. We met before. Yeah. And, uh, we're, so we're he met. was like, <clears throat> it was just timing for the both of them because they were yeah. looking for a signature artist and he just came around. Yeah. And yeah. he had made this, uh, this song on his own called Ocean Breath. Uh-huh. And he was helping. I was helping him do a lot of promotion for that, like a lot of video stuff. And then, because I'm a professional camera operator, I've done it for 25 years. Yeah. So he's like, "Oh, I've been given this iPhone and this gimbal." Mm-hmm. Uh, he's like, "Can you help me shoot?" Good. He's like, "I know you're a good shooter." So yeah, he's yeah. Like, Get some good footage for me. I should talk to you about uh, um, doing a, a, a video for Let's me. Do it, actually, man. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, man. We'll, we'll I do see. all my we'll own talk, videos. So we'll talk about that later. I've so. done it for a long. I know. I, I need to get a, a few things a little more, uh, uh, a little more crispy for yeah. the new stuff for the stuff I'm working on. Yeah. yeah. I wrote four songs. Uh, Coincidentally, I like I, I don't really stop writing, but when I was on tour, I ended up Good writing four know. songs, and I just I came out of nowhere. I uh, I wrote one. Uh, if you, before you go, go on ahead. that, let yeah. me ask let, you this. Yeah, finish up. I want. To, Where does your most of your writing come from? With me traveling, it comes out of nowhere. Like a lot of it is sitting around, but I get full completed songs while traveling. Sometimes, yeah, it just. Where do they come from? Uh, not where they come from, but where do you, where where do you capture them the most? I capture them the most in travel, in where? transit. I I think I agree, I agree with you a certain amount. Uh, I'm always I don't I don't sit at home like waiting for things. Uh, I I do I do practice a lot. I practice guitar a lot. I practice piano. Um, uh, a lot of them just come to me because I, I I'm I, I said to the somebody the other day it's uh, the tap the tap is on right now again like it's like almost like it's never stopped but it's on particularly right now and um, you're in the zone and uh, I I don't I don't mess with it I don't try to uh, to uh, analyze it too much like on the last let me see. Oh, like r- r- songs will come to me you know, completely in dreams. Mm. Like when I wake up in the morning before yeah. it's unfiltered, I, I wake up at, at five or six. I woke up at five this morning, just like I it. usually do. And I'll just start writing it and I'll hear the melody in my head. You know, like, uh, like the song Sugar Bush off of Keep Your Love Steady, which is a bit of an incredible song, actually. Because it happened uh, the night... Uh, before the uh, election of 45 back mm-hmm. in, I believe it was maybe 2016 or something like that. And it's basically being how happy and how lucky I am to be born in Canada. Mm-hmm. And it's about living in the sugar bush and, and sleeping in the sugar bush. Oh. And there's a video you can check out sometime. You may have seen it already. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's where some of the inspiration comes from. 
Um, I'm always reading. I'm always, I'm a voracious reader, so stuff comes from that. You know, I have my phone. I put notes on my phone. Uh, like I've got many notes there, and uh, that sort of thing. And uh, you know, getting back to our indigenous friends. So shout out to Digging Roots. And He's her, played with them. Yeah. 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 Shaniqua is that yeah, probably I, her name? I might and, be wrong. I think it's close. The yeah, name's close. Yeah. yeah, and her husband. Shaniqui. It's something like Shaniqui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry for the mispronunciation. Yeah. But her husband is like a, a really incredible guitarist. Yeah. As well, rock guitarist. Yeah. And I heard them, uh, I was invited out to the Canada Folk Music Awards last year in Vancouver, two years ago. And that's where I met them. And uh, I met uh, Kim Beggs, who's also a... a Average, you know, songwriter who I fell in love with a record of hers, and I had to chase her down. She's old school, right? She's yeah, been around for a minute. yeah, a long yeah, time. I, I think Evan <clears throat> mentioned her a few times. Yeah, before. she's a bit of a, she's a, she's an icon actually. Yeah. and I I, I I hunted her down and I, mean, I looked for her at the awards. Introduced myself and said, "I really love your song uh, uh, about the greyhound. Uh, it's a fantastic song." But she writes all these great songs. And so we became friends, and that's where I met uh, the woman from uh, Digging Roots at the same table that night. So anyway, so I just want to say that. Anyway. No, it's great, and it's, <laughs> it's it's a small world, man. Every everywhere yeah. we go, uh, we talk and, to people. Kim's got a new record just coming out right now. Okay. And so shout out to Kim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm. I spoke with Evan. We still talk on the phone. Like Good. he's he's insanely busy. Like he's. Yeah. I think he's in Germany now. Mm -hmm. But he's booked like every day. Yeah. And uh, he's still, I call him and he, like, I'll miss, he won't answer. He's busy sometimes, but he, mm -hmm. he calls me right back. What's up, buddy? Yeah. And uh, I was like, hey, uh, you want to come do the podcast? He's like, yeah, sure. But he's just, like, I got to get him on a day. Yeah. When he's in between. When he's back in Toronto. Shows or something. Or, yeah, yeah. You know. Um, well, you're lucky to get me, so in this day. Exactly. You know, See? I'm, uh, uh, after the. Top of the tier, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you said about the writing process because I do that too. It's like I'm almost, uh, it's like routine every day and then when it comes, it comes. Yeah. So I read, I have this thing called five hours every day. I do, I read like an hour, I'll write an hour, I'll do emailing for like an hour, I'll mm -hmm. edit for an hour and then I'll do like a workout for an hour. So every day right. I'm reading and writing every right. single day. So when a song comes, it's just very, it just flows. It yeah. Just, it's, you just write it out. Just writes out. And, yeah. And there's no blockage. There's no like, yeah. hung up on anything. But it seems to me like I, I get pent up a lot. And then once mm -hmm. I'm relaxed traveling, I'm not thinking of anything. It just kind of comes out. Yeah. Not all the time. It's mm -hmm. like sometimes it comes out like that. But yeah. So getting back to my example of, uh, of the writing the four songs on the on the. East Coast tour, the Devil's Taxi tour. I was holed up in the Halifax Hotel for a few days because uh, my partner had uh, uh, some stuff that she was doing there as well. And so uh, a song came to me right then, and uh, uh, "Wheel Keeps Turning," and it's 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 almost like a kind of a, kind of a Tom Petty vibe, uh, and it's like a, a rock, and it's got a great great anthem chorus which I haven't played live yet. I was playing on uh, playing in a Grossman's uh, last week, but uh, I, I I injured my wrist in a little construction injust, uh, injury. I was lifting something too heavy, and I couldn't. And I sprained it, so uh, I had to. I was in pain, so I don't like going out when I'm like that vulnerable, that in pain. So I uh, nothing to do but just say sorry boys and, and girls I, I'll have to make it another time spectator today. yeah and I'm glad I did because it's just it just sucks yeah, you gotta take <laughs> you care to, of yourself you have to, you, have yeah. to uh, <coughs> you know let the healing process happen but anyway so I, I wrote that song and but that was one where I actually worked on it quite a bit it was uh, it, it was influenced also by Chester Nova Scotia seeing my friend Brad again talking about Cancook Island it has a nautical theme but I ended up editing it for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, the The course was fine, but you just had to. Sometimes you just have to work on. Don't get too complicated with the yeah. metaphors. Get the idea. Yeah, just get it out and keep it short and sweet. Yeah. 
I kept editing down words until it was just very succinct. And it's like the old, uh, the old Nashville uh, um, um, slogan phrase that they borrow from the Russian folk literature. Don't bore us, get to the chorus. So, <laughs> shout out to Bert Carroll like there. That. That's yeah, yeah. That. And so that's an old Nashville thing. So like, nobody remembers the verses. Yeah. Like, I even heard, uh, uh, um, uh, what's his name, Grawl from the Food Fighters? David Grawl. Dave, yeah. Dave, yeah. David Grawl, uh, talking about that. So he says, like, nobody remembers the chorus yes. or the, the verse, you know. You just sing it. You, they just want to hear the rocking. They just want to hear the rocking chorus. And he was joking, but he was absolutely right. And it's the same thing as the Nashville thing, Don't, you know, the Russian, uh, the Russian <laughs> phrase. And uh, so I have a lot of fun when I do that. When, when, yeah. I, whenever I'm, when I'm looking for something and, and, you know, I don't fret it. I don't worry about it too much. I just get to the point and then as long as and i'm very melodic so that's one of my life strengths is not just storytelling but my 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 melody is strong so i've gotten more comfortable to just let the voice do this do the talking and don't don't get too hung up on words you know yeah uh they have to be they have to fit they have to you know everything has to hit like three words or four words and, and on a line it's just all you need sometimes, just yeah. eight. Yeah. You could do eight. Um, but you're in a different genre where you have 20 because you, you do uh, hip hop. Yeah. Right. And that's cool too. And it's a lot of it's, verbalization. And, yeah. And it's, it's cool. But the, the genre that I, I've been sort of rooted in for about, uh, you know, quite frankly, 50 years, um, I still play the song uh, I wrote 48 years ago. That we used to do in Chester called Sure Would Be Nice. And believe it, it's taken on a whole new life. Uh, I did it on a record a few years ago with Marcus Walker on, on bass and uh, Don Dixon Marcus, drums. Yeah. I know you know Marcus. I saw, we just saw him up and about yeah. on Thursday. Oh, good. He's good. doing good. He I know. Great. I saw him uh, in, a big hug and in, in the hospital. And, uh, and uh, you know, he's, he's on the road to recovery. And things happen, you know, shit yeah. happens. And so that was a cool record called Songs for Mez. And we did this record. Anyway, the new, uh, the, the revert, worked version of it, um, it's a kind of hallucinogenic rocking song. It's about hitchhiking. Nice. It's about my first hitchhiking trip to California when I was 17. I left the farm and I just stuck up my thumb and I was hitchhiking for three months. So my dad went to Vancouver. Okay, I, I thought I was going to 16. Vancouver, but I ended up in San Francisco. Well, you went so west. I, I, yeah, yeah, you went west. Yeah, go west. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just yeah. the way things happen. People who I met, right? Yeah, that's cool. And a lot, of, and that's what set my musical career. In there. Okay. In, 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 I played guitar, but I heard so much great street music. Yeah. That you soak all that. That up. was the thing. I soaked it up, and I, and I, fortunately, I just knew what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've done other things to help pay the bills and raise my family, but. Music has always been the uh, the thing that uh, was my foundation. Love it. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. I um, it surprises me still that I'm I'm so passionate about it. Still, I mean, I it's, I can't. Yeah, you I can't have believe to be. it. Well, you have to be if yeah. you're going this long and, and putting all this yeah, time. I don't. I, I, don't I, don't, I don't quite understand, but it's just like I keep getting asked to play. I keep doing little tours, and I keep writing songs, and I keep uh, I've released like. Uh, Five albums and, a, and a, a cassette back in the day. Yeah, and uh, you know, so it's all it's all happening. You keep it rocking, man. I'm it glad keeps you're, going. You're doing it. You're doing yeah, it. it all it is what it is. Yeah. I um, I was gonna mention you said country music, and I work uh, actually work the Country Music Awards. Oh, I work uh, production. Good. I've done like live TV for a long time now. <clears throat> you you probably know uh, Kevin Neal. Uh, he he, uh, he was up nominated for Pedal Steel Guitar Player of the Year. Oh, possibly. I'm not familiar with a lot of the acts, but oh, I yeah. know uh, <clears throat> when I was out there, uh, there was a guy that was staying here with me. His name's Ty Wilson. He's a country music artist okay. from Peterborough. And he uh, he had a guitar guy that he was playing with out there. Um, okay. But yeah, there's, it's funny because everything's a degree of separation. 
Mm-hmm. Like I'll meet some audio tech guys and then they'll know this person in a band. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a very small world. Isn't it's it? so small. Once you get in, you get in yeah. music and production. It's very small because every yeah. audio guy's in a band. Every, yeah, usually, every yeah. you know. Some people stay out of it. They just do the yeah. They the, just the, do the technical production. stuff, but and they're so good at it that, that yeah. it's just just like and, I, and I've I've sort of stayed away from the technical, but. I was forced to learn it a little more when I was yeah in now well I'm saying now that indie artists are are, are more than just musicians now they have to do yeah, everything. I mean you you're can do a, a whole record in your in your bedroom. tour planner your uh, AV person your social media you're doing all this yeah so all the above yeah 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 so yeah so so I don't know whether Kevin won that award or not but he plays with me he's played like for the last three or four years okay he, as one of the, one of the pedal steel players nice you know and. Uh, so, he, but he, he, I just watched him get better and better and better. It's just yeah. so, so great. Everybody's a young guy to me, but he's a, he's a great young guy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, good for him. I, um, I love the steel guitar sound. I have, mm. well, um, one of my first album was a, a steel guitar. Uh, you know, Andrew Frost, right? Andrew. I don't know him personally. But know you know, the name. like, yeah. for, and he, anyways, he was, he was, uh, he was with my sister for the longest time. They were dating for about 10 years. Mm-hmm. So he did some steel guitar for me for the, mm-hmm. the one song. And I always love that sound. That's uh, Yeah, it's what it's I grew up with, unique. I guess. Yeah, yeah kind of it suits. suits uh, yeah, it's very atmospheric. It can be very atmospheric. Yeah. As well as, you know, the traditional sound of Hank Williams and the Drifting Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Uh, although he didn't necessarily have a pedal steel guitar player with him, Hank. Uh, but very back to basics uh, you know straight ahead country music I, yeah I like that you know as well do you ever play in uh, you mentioned Boston I was just I finally got down to the states in July so I did a tour and the last stop I went to was uh, Portsmouth New Hampshire mm. so New Hampshire was gorgeous it was you know very it was Sounds very like, like old America, like old right. uh, 1776 type of America. Yeah. You know, this is the Mayflower. Yeah, no, I, of... I haven't spent a lot of time on the eastern seaboard of the States. I've driven down Highway 61. That was my first time playing anywhere on the East Coast. I haven't played there. Um, I've sort of been reluctant to, to go down there. And also the... Uh, the, uh, the uh, the VZ you need now. Well, that was just really expensive. Say that you, I didn't you, want to screw it's myself. It's harder up. with people with gear, where I can just fly under the radar because I, I don't really. Yeah, but if you get caught, well you're, known, you'll you know? get you'll get banned, and and, uh, and yeah, I, I don't want to do that. So yeah, no, exactly. You I have to set up wanna... a tour yeah. that makes sense, and uh, you know, I was fine playing in. Uh, New Orleans because it was part of a conference. And yeah, I wasn't paid. I was, I was, uh, it was a fantastic uh, showcase of, of protest songs. Went on this by this really great, great leader of this uh, uh, music for change. Oh man, Peter, I forget his last name, but he's uh, I still follow him on Facebook and stuff, and he's a very political guy and very uh, good songwriter. Um, yeah, so I, I will at some point. Um, when I have gear and stuff, it means uh, uh, a lot of traveling in the states. You can the distances are less far than than Canada. That's the thing I meant so about kind of, the states. I would do like a short tour. I guess American uh, musician friends and myself, I see them just like, did you just see their lineup? They're just like two months packed of shows. Yeah, and it's just like. Drive an hour, drive an hour, another city. Drive Not an hour, bad. drive yeah, an no, hour. That's good. So many cities you can hit up in a close proximity. That's yeah. Yeah. And uh, they really, uh, they really appreciate music, musicians they as can. a profession too. It's a that's whole true. different level there than it is here. Yeah, I find that when touring, uh, you know, as you know, Toronto can be a little bit cliquey. In, uh, in the way they do things, yeah. right? And, <laughs> but when I go out of the city and play, people are just really happy to see me. Yeah, and I enjoy they, playing outside and, of Toronto. And you're on the road, and they appreciate you've traveled like, you know, 
hundreds and thousands of kilometers to get out to uh, to see them, right? And to me, it's important. It's exciting. Uh, you know, it's everything. It's 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 getting there. Your gear's in good shape. Setting up, working with the sound man, um, and then you know, saving your voice. All these things. Uh, you know, keeping your energy level yeah. up so that when you know the nine o'clock or the eight o'clock show starts, you're you're there. You're fresh. And, and then I, you know, you give it all. In. And uh, good thing is uh, when I when I'm traveling i've noticed the last few years is that um of course i cut i cut down on drinking a lot because i can't uh, yeah. I, I i can't uh drink and then drive the next day Neither or whatever or you know, so um you know so it's been good um i stopped drinking red wine which wasn't particularly really? good for me anyway for my uh for my other respiratory issues but uh so I felt healthier than I, I have ever felt. Like when I came back from a 28 day tour, I was like, I'm ready to rock still. And then you calm down for about a week. I was riding the wave. This is what I said to Marie. Yeah. Cause she was out there only half the time with me. And then she had to go back to Toronto and we sent Andre and River back. They flew them back and, uh, and Marie flew back from Halifax. I went on to play New Brunswick and Moncton and Fredericton, and Quebec city and Montreal and in Chelsea, Quebec, I think it was Chelsea, yeah. And uh, yeah, and I I had the times and the and the, the distances worked out really well. And I had uh, actually good paying gigs and breweries uh, for the most part. And it was just lovely. Uh, and so I, I was feeling so good, you know. Um, for the two weeks after I got home, I just like, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to change anything. I still ride in the wave. Glowing, uh, glowing. And I didn't, uh, it's funny, I didn't watch a lot of media uh, when I was out there, so I know the, 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 the shit that's going on and the complications of the world, but I didn't have to watch it every day. I, I, I ignored a bit. lot of this stuff when I'm on the road purposely because yeah. I just, just want yeah, to Yeah, so it, it, was, uh, it was triggering me a big deal, so I've actually kept that up. I only started watching the news in full uh, like only three or four times. This is, the, this is like the 1st of October, I believe, or something. And uh, I know what's going on. I feel like I, I, I'm aware of stuff, but I just didn't need to see it every day. And you don't uh, need to consume it every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. So I'm on. A, I'm on another uh, artistic uh, uh, path, which I've done before. I'm also writing a novel. Lovely. Yeah. Nice. And uh, I've been writing it on and off, even within the last two records it was for the last five years. Oh, wow. It's called The Chestnut Wars. So I, I wanted after, so the plan is to uh, finish it. I've got 28 chapters done and uh, it's a work of fiction. Okay. It's like a, it's, it's like a Huckleberry Finn story. It's about Amazing. three young boys who grew up in a small town, Ontario, and, in, a, in a place, the mythical place called Honeywood. Okay. And not the real place called Honeywood, but yeah. a mythical place yeah. called Honeywood. And the reason I called it Honeywood because I was traveling out east on north, no, we'll get to it, north, south, east, west. I was kind of traveling out west on the Western Campfires Tour in the BC. Yeah. And I drove through Summerland, the most gorgeous valley, green, lush, ripe fruit valley with the most gorgeous name. I, doesn't everybody want to live in Summerland? Yeah. So I, I needed a name of this mythical town. So I thought Honeywood would, that's would fit. So would that's, like that's where. I, yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't you want to live exactly. in Honeywood? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what the story is about. This three young guy, and it's a, it's a murder mystery. Okay. Yeah. Do then, you have a, like a release date or no? Wait, no. It's, it's two thirds done. done. So I'm just done. working. I'm grinding my way through it. Yeah. It's not really a grind, uh, and then I'll be looking for a publisher. Amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, that's Good what's for you. going on. Yeah. So you got a new album uh, or something in the works? Or? Uh, I'm not doing a new record right now. I, I had to like... Because you just released the... Well, yeah, I just did la, just last year. So yeah. I'm still just touring that. Yeah, Devil's so Taxi. you're still running off. Which I think will I will be touring for the next another couple of years. Awesome. And then do uh, another record. But I, I needed to kind of like... A little bit departmentalize the the music, which is very hard for me to do. Literally, when I said I'm not, I'm just gonna leave music for a while, 
and I was sitting on my front porch, and another song came to me, which I wrote on the front porch. Can't stop Called that. Sunrise, <laughs> which is uh, which I will play at Grossman's on the next time. It's a, like a deeply strong personal love song, and that was inspired after hearing the East Pointers at, at the, the Budweiser stage and Alan Doyle. Alan Doyle, God, what, what a fantastic performer he is. He has everybody in the palm of his hand. His heart is literally on his sleeve. He's like, and coincidentally enough, his accordion player, piano player, uh, lives directly across the street from me, uh, who I know, Todd, Todd Lumley, a fantastic player. And so I knew he played. So you're, with him. you're like seeing him and. I like, we talk all the time. Awesome. And, so, and so when I saw him recently uh, attending the, the community garden, I said, hey, I, I just walked over and, uh, with his wife and I said, hey, I saw you tonight. You played a great show. And he said, Alan is. Is exactly the same as you see him on stage. You talk to him; he's just like nothing changes. He's yeah. like, so what a great thing! He writes anthems. He's three chord, uh, folky, rocky anthems. You know, and That's a amazing. fantastic band. Yeah, I so, imagine. So that was fun, uh, and, and so I ended up writing a song, kind of inspired by him, because uh, he wrote some some really you know heart touching love songs as well as songs about tragedy and well, you know, it having, and having and partying you know he's got yeah. that happening in spades but he writes he's got a wide thing and he's so busy he does music tv productions and everything yeah. he's, he's like he never stops right it's great to to see your peers play and also like to be inspired by your i i couldn't yeah. get youtube working on the go train the other day so i went back to bank ah. camp. bank camp is solid and oh, okay. I just dug up some of my f friends' songs. My friend came back. My partner came back from Ottawa and looked on the on the uh, on the uh, the train as well. And and she said the the the, the Wi-Fi was not working well. It's awful. It doesn't oh. doesn't work. It's oh, okay. Just, it's oh, like it's for show. Oh, well. oh it's for show. <laughs> it's okay. For show. Oh, the Wi-Fi. Yeah, and and free wine. No, yeah. we don't do that either. Or no. champagne. That's no. for the business class. That's oh, the okay. other class. No, okay. Um, so where's your next show? Is at this? I think you're gonna air this on uh, <clears throat> October fourteenth. So okay. Anything, what you got going on? Um, I'm playing October twenty first uh, back in Collingwood. Okay. At the Collingwood Brewery. Oh. Uh, so. Doing a patio show. Yeah. So that's really it. they're a very interesting group. There. I've spoken with them before, but I didn't get booked. They yeah. they're uh, they booked me right away. I don't know, maybe because I'm so good looking. I don't know. There, I don't sold. know. I got, I got it all happening. The, the long hair. Uh, I, I did the shaved hair, hair for a long time, yeah. like 10, 20 years ago when I was uh, doing it. I loved it because I was playing a lot of tennis. Yeah. I was kind of modeling myself after Andre Agassi. I was going to say Agassi. Was, yeah, 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 yeah. And I still play tennis a lot. So uh, I love tennis. I play oh, you do? Let's play yeah. tennis someday. All right. I, I'm a member of Q. Oh, I'll shit. I'll invite you down, down there? All the time. Oh, you got twice the link. Free. You got the link down there, right? Yeah, yeah. The well, one I'll, down. I'll invite you down. All right. Anytime you want to play. You get the links. Yeah. Um. After my wrist heals up, but anyway. So where was I here? Uh, oh, so the Collingwood Brewery. Yeah. They also have a festival. Uh, there something like the Harvest. Yeah. Festival, yeah. which I'm going to try to get into next Sick. year because I think they're going to love what I do, and uh, especially since we played uh, Collingwood Art Crawl, and uh, so. Really nice people, and I'm gonna put up that's my next gig, so that's October, and then I'll probably be at Grossman's at the end of the month, dropping in with my friends. I test out all my new songs there, yeah, me too. And they're they're like my living room, they're like my basement uh party as kids. Uh, I'm very comfortable there, me too. You know, uh, I they're literally all friends, Phil and and, and Kevin Jeffries and the drummer, uh, so many people. Uh, well, Dean, two, two Dean my, half my bands. That's them. true, and and uh, <laughs> Wayne Neon. Wayne, I played with Wayne for I, I know eight years. That's right. So yeah. I've only played with him at the uh, and uh, at the uh, at Grossman's, and then Brian Morgan on on fiddle. I just had Brian here on Monday. Oh, cool! Record yesterday some violin for me. Oh, no, good. sorry, a week ago. Okay. A week ago yesterday. Brian started playing in my band. Yeah, and he's going to be here next week, and we're going to do a podcast, because he's got an album he just dropped. 
Okay. So his said, own yeah, stuff? Come on. He's his own stuff. I said, come on by. Let's, let's, yeah. uh, let's promote it. And yeah, so he played my last gig with me with, with uh, Kevin Neal on Pedal Steel yeah. and my, my regular drummer, Ambrose Potty from uh, Crash Vegas those days. And Kevin Jeffries and uh, myself on guitar and vocals. And uh, so Brian did a did a great job, and he, of course it's 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 really great having the pedal steel and the the violin, because mm. my other violin player Kyle moved out east, so I and after I thought, well let's bring my violin back in, and Brian I know is a good great player. Oh yeah, he's and he's and he also does backup harmonies too, so he's, yeah. he's not afraid to uh, tackle them, and so. The I more see him harmony, the better. The mic there all the time. He just jumps on. Yeah, 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 yeah. He sometimes uh, oohs and ahs the words because he he lip reads. Doesn't yeah. know all the words. So I like we actually did a few rehearsals and uh, you know printed out the lyrics and I, and I got him to like enunciate more. Yeah, he won't mind me saying this, but he's such a music he's such a musical guy. Yeah, that I really uh, and I, I only play with people I love. I love to play with. I, I'm too. past the stage where. Uh, I'll just do a hired guns. Just yeah. I can do that. I can play with anybody I want pretty well. I just like uh, who I can have fun with. Yeah, yeah. and That's... so it, it's fun, and it's yeah, it's about being positive energy. So, so we'll we'll play with him at, at uh, Grossman's, and then I have a a gig in November at uh, with, at Drone Taberna. Yeah, which is my kind of my regular. I play two or three times a year there. Yeah, I know uh, Jordana and. Uh... And Dr. Keys, they play there okay. tons of times. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I really like that place. It's almost like, it's like my favorite place to play. It's such yeah. a cool vibe. They get my music. They And uh, I started out playing there with uh, my guitarist, very good friend, David Baxter, mm -hmm. who uh, unfortunately had a heart attack uh, so. um, last year, passed away. And we had like big plans to do little things. Like he was, he's fantastic guitarist, great friend, very musical. We had a duel going that I, I, I was like, I was in the pocket, in, in my comfort zone. We complimented each other really well. He played with all kinds of people. He used to be uh, in a band in New York City called The Sharks with, um, with his wife at the time. And, uh, Basil Donovan and Blue Rodeo was in the band wow. and uh, Basil played with me uh, uh, once at, uh, recently after David passed and uh, he'll probably play with me again but um, they were in a band together and uh, they were great they got signed to like one of the big record companies in Canada I don't know Sony or Columbia I'm not sure mm -hmm. And then uh, they sort of broke up the band and just focused on the woman lead singer, who was really great. I, uh, her, her name's escaped me, but she's, uh, I, I met her recently, and she, she's really great. Uh, so anyway, David was going, was, we were going to do the duel thing, because I, 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 I literally had in mind, somebody has these plans, that, uh, the guy from uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, um, the guitarist, um, uh, mind slipping right now he worked very closely with uh tom petty to to etch out the songs so i kind of uh, oh, wow. was looking for a, a really super guitar player to complement my songwriting and to tom complement. passed away a while ago right? yeah he did yeah. but the other guy um he's he's in a band called the dirty knobs okay uh, who just uh played the danforth music hall oh, it's not larry campbell and uh, I feel bad that I, I won't Google it, but everybody yeah. knows who he is. He's, yeah. He wrote songs with, uh, with um, oh, uh, oh, all kinds of people. And uh, anyway, so I thought I had my guitar player, and then uh, I did, but uh, yes, but he passed on. So I'm kind of experimenting with different people and different sounds. But it's a, a duo is a nice way to travel. Yeah, uh, and, and you have a big enough sound. If you had somebody with the tone of David Baxter and the and the, uh, the technical ability that he has, so well, so all you guitar players out there, uh, you know, give me give me a shout out if uh, if you think uh, I like the guy from Pete's uh, looking. I I like the guy from Grossman's. Yeah, uh, Mitch Lewis. Mitch is awesome. Yeah. Mitch is great, and he yeah. he plays with all the the top players. Yeah, we've actually we we've. Talked about playing together, and we every time I've got a gig, he's been busy. 
and but we'll, we'll figure out something because he's he's a cool guy i enjoy hanging around him and he he's got a great sound he's a great guitar player and yeah i think something good will come loose. into your wheelhouse ah and, thanks yeah and uh it'll it'll match what you need and yeah and, uh whatever you know wherever you're going yeah so that's a short-term plan so uh, nice that's about uh, the book's interesting i hope to to see that soon oh uh, you, you and, will uh, it's gone uh, I could say the title. That's all I got. It's the Chestnut Wars. I like that. That's yeah, because in the small kids in the small town used to gather chestnuts. Yeah, and one side of town would get into a civil war against the other side of town. Yeah, with the Chestnut Wars. We used to do uh, crab apples. That was the. Oh yeah, crab apples. Yeah, but crab apples. Yeah, the chestnuts just uh, kind of. Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, leave a mark. More. <laughs> oh, they do leave a mark more. Yeah, they, they sort of uh, yeah, more warp, warp speed up the the war uh, yeah. a little bit, you know. Warfare and, change up the warfare. Yeah, we used to use garbage can lids to defend ourselves. Kids don't. Uh, this is an era before cell phones. So <laughs> there was no uh, yeah. evidence left. Um, yeah, I think we're. Uh, wind this out uh thanks for stopping by man it was a lot of fun good talking to you yeah I like you to, too, thank man. you so much for uh, inviting me yeah and, and it's we'll just like at, i like hearing everybody's journeys and like you know you never know who you know and uh yeah yeah okay all well, the best to you all the best of the book and uh, okay thank you yeah we'll see you in the and we'll, we'll talk about some um some uh, video stuff yeah let's do that yeah, yeah. with that thanks for stopping by all right Cheers. Cheers. Good.